In the heart of Africa, Nigeria, where the line between the lavish estates of corrupt politicians and the impoverished neighborhoods of ordinary citizens blurs, the legend of the Nigerian bush baby took on a new chilling dimension. As news of rampant corruption and embezzlement spread throughout the country, whispers of the bush baby's return echoed through the halls of power. It was said that the creature, enraged by the greed and deceit of those in positions of authority, had emerged from the depths of the forest to exact its own form of justice. The first to feel the wrath of the bush baby was a prominent senator named Senator Gandosh, known for his extravagant lifestyle and suspiciously large bank accounts. Senator Gandosh was a very evil and selfish man who never cared about his people and the development of his community. He always diverted funds meant for building good schools, roads and hospitals in the community for his own personal needs. He has been rumored to have embezzled billions of Naira, claiming that all of the money was eaten and destroyed by rats that invaded his office. The country was shocked by his claims on the disappearance of the money. One fateful night, as the clock struck midnight, the senator awoke to the sound of a baby's cries echoing through his mansion. Thinking it was a mere nuisance, he tried to ignore it and return to sleep. But the cries persisted, growing louder and more desperate with each passing moment. Suddenly, the senator felt a chill run down his spine as he sensed a presence in the room. Before he could react, the Nigerian bush baby materialized before him, its eyes burning with fierce intensity. With a blood-curdling cry, the creature lunged at the senator, demanding restitution for the funds he had stolen from the Nigerian people. Terrified, the senator attempted to flee, but the bush baby was relentless in its pursuit. It chased him through the corridors of his mansion, tormenting him with visions of his ill-gotten wealth slipping through his fingers like sand. Cornered and desperate, the senator finally confessed to the location of the hidden funds, which he had buried deep within the grounds of his estate. The bush baby retrieved everything and asked the senator to step down the next day, else he would come back and take his life. With a triumphant cry, the bush baby vanished into the night, leaving the senator shaken and humbled by the encounter. Next on the list was Honorable Dorothy. In the heart of Nigeria's bustling capital, Abuja, Honorable Dorothy, the Minister for Petroleum, lived in a sprawling mansion that spoke volumes of her ill-gotten wealth. Surrounded by opulence and luxury, she reveled in the spoils of corruption, buying lavish properties abroad and indulging in a life of extravagance. But as darkness fell over the city, a silent spectre crept through the halls of her mansion, a harbinger of justice known only as the Nigerian Bush Baby. With eyes ablaze with righteous fury, it approached Honorable Dorothy's bedroom, its presence sending shivers down her spine. As Honorable Dorothy lay in her bed, her mind clouded with guilt, she heard a faint cry piercing through the silence of the night. At first, she dismissed it as a trick of her imagination, but as the cry grew louder, she felt a sense of dread wash over her. Suddenly, the room was filled with an otherworldly light, and before her, stood the Nigerian bush baby, its form illuminated by the flickering flame of its lantern. With a voice that seemed to echo from the depths of the earth, it accused her of plundering the nation's wealth and living a life of excess at the expense of the Nigerian people. Paralyzed with fear, Honorable Dorothy attempted to flee, but the bush baby was relentless in its pursuit. 
It chased her through the corridors of her mansion, its cries growing louder with each passing moment. Cornered and trembling with fear, Honorable Dorothy fell to her knees and begged for mercy. With tears streaming down her face, she confessed to her crimes, revealing the extent of her corruption and the vast fortune she had amassed through deceit and treachery. The Bush baby demanded that the minister go on her computer and email all the evidence of embezzled funds and documents of illegally acquired properties, both at home and abroad, to all the authorities capable of bringing her to justice, or else he would end her life. Crying and pleading for her life, the minister complied with the Bush baby's demands. Afterwards, the Bush baby vanished into the night, returning to the forest. The minister was found guilty of corruption, stripped of her position, and incarcerated. The next target of the Bush baby was a tyrannical governor, Governor Babajide. He ruled with an iron fist, his power unquestioned and his authority absolute. But behind the facade of governance lurked a darker truth, a truth that would soon come back to haunt him. For months, the civil servant workers of the state had gone without pay, their pleas for assistance falling on deaf ears. Governor Babajide's promises of reform had proven empty, and the people's suffering only grew worse with each passing day. Desperate and destitute, the civil servants took to the streets in protest, their voices raised in defiance against the injustices they faced. But Governor Babajide remained unmoved, his pockets lined with the very money meant to sustain those he had sworn to serve. The governor had announced to the public that the funds which he was supposed to use to pay the workers' salaries were all eaten by monkeys who invaded his office building safe. Therefore, he claimed he could not pay their salaries because the money was gone. One fateful night, as the governor slept soundly in his opulent mansion, a chilling presence crept through the corridors, its eyes burning with righteous anger. It was the Nigerian bush baby, the harbinger of justice, come to hold Governor Babajide accountable for his crimes. With a flicker of its lantern and a rustle of its mat, the bush baby entered the governor's chambers, its presence sending shivers down his spine. But the governor, steeped in arrogance and corruption, dismissed the apparition as a mere trick of the mind. As the night wore on, a cacophony of screeches and screams filled the air, echoing through the governor's mansion like a symphony of chaos. The governor awoke to find his office ransacked, his safe torn open, and his ill-gotten gains nowhere to be found. As the governor was still in shock, he turned back to see a tiny spiritual being standing behind him. He screamed and begged for his life. The bush baby told the governor he would spare his life only on one condition, that he make a public announcement confessing all his corrupt deeds and revealing what happened to the money he was meant to use to pay the workers and develop the state. Otherwise, he would come back for him the next day. As dawn broke, the governor arranged for an emergency announcement on television. He confessed to all that he had done and asked for the people's forgiveness. Eventually, the governor was removed from office and charged in court to face the law. He was later found guilty and sentenced to prison. With a wave of its hand, the Bush baby stripped the governor of his wealth and power, leaving him broken and penniless. And as the first light of dawn broke over the horizon, the governor was left to reckon with the consequences of his actions, a cautionary tale of greed and betrayal for all to see. Word of the Bush baby's retribution spread across the country, striking fear into the hearts of corrupt politicians 
across the country. Night after night, the creature visited the homes of those who had betrayed the trust of the Nigerian people, extracted confessions, and reclaimed stolen funds with a relentless determination. As the corrupt elite trembled in fear, the Nigerian bush baby became a symbol of justice and retribution, a guardian of the people's rights in a world rife with corruption and deceit. And though its methods were unorthodox and its origins shrouded in mystery, the legend of the Nigerian bush baby lived on, a reminder that even the most powerful are not above the law.